Hey agents, welcome to week two of our Agents in Action training course, where we are learning about how to be God's special agents in this world and how to live for God and show his love to the world. Last week, we learned about unselfish service, that God calls us to serve other people, to put our needs second and their needs first. This week, we've got a different mission. So last week, good mission. Still keep doing that. Keep on doing that. But this week, we've got a new mission, a new skill for us to practice as we live in this world as God's special agents. So I'm going to tell you a story and see if you can figure out what our special mission is. So, years ago, we learned about, well, last week, we learned about Abraham. And he lived years ago. That's the years ago part I was going for. So Abraham lived 4,000 years ago. And we learned how he left his home and he traveled to Canaan. And it took him a long time. And he had lots of animals and sheep and people with him. And as he traveled, they would have to stop. And they would have to dig wells because it was kind of a deserty region. And the, one of the most important things that we need is water. We need oxygen, water, food. Can't live without those. Well, there's lots of oxygen. That wasn't a problem. But the water was a problem. Food was easy. They had animals with them. They could, you know, kill a goat, eat some goat. Um, you know, milk a cow, have some milk. You know, so they were fine with that. But water was what they really needed. So when they would stop, they would dig a well. And that comes into our story today. So years pass and Abraham has a son. And his name is Isaac. And Isaac grows up and he's got his own family. And he's got his own herds of, of animals and stuff. And they have their well. And things are going really good for them. And their herds are growing. And now there were people who lived in the land. And they saw that Abraham's family, so Isaac, was prospering, was doing really well. And they got jealous. And so they snuck in and they filled his well in. So they filled it with dirt so that they couldn't get fresh water out. And without water, you can't drink, and then you can't live, and then you die, and things, bad things happen. And then the leader of these people, whose name was Abimelech, came to Isaac and said, leave. We don't like you. Go. And so Isaac said, okay, I'm going to go. So they had dug, they had a well. They had a nice well. See, there's a well, and it was gone. Boop. Goodbye goes the well. So they leave. And they head to a different place. And they go to a place that Abraham had stopped at on his trip and had dug a well. And so they opened up that well. They, they dug around and they reopened the well and they had another well. Great, they've got water. And then they dug a second well because water is so important. So they had two wells and things were going great. And then the people who lived in that region, they came to them and said, we, we don't like you. We don't, these are our wells, these are on our land. We don't like you, you have to leave. So what does Isaac do? He says, fine, I'll leave. Two more wells gone. Goodbye, wells. So they go to a new place. And they settle down and they dig a new well. They've got another well. And these same people came to them and said, this is still our land. You didn't go far enough. This is our well now. It's our water. It's our land. Oh, so what does Isaac do? He leaves. He just, he just leaves. Ooh. Hitting my special missions. So he leaves and he digs another well. And this time nobody comes. He had moved far enough away that nobody came and complained about his well. And then they stayed there for a while and they moved again to another place and built another well. So by this time they've dug a lot of wells. They're getting really good at digging wells. And nobody comes. And then they've been there a while, and Abimelech, remember he's the first guy who came and said, I don't like you, this is our land, go away, we want this well. Actually, they, did, they filled in the well. So Abimelech comes, and he says, you know what? I think I messed up. I see how God has blessed you, and how you've prospered, and I'm sorry. And they decided to live together in peace. And they made peace, and they got to keep their well. So that's our story. What does that have to do with us? What can we learn from that? Let's take a look inside our special mission envelope. So our special mission envelope 
is a blank piece of paper. Hmm. I know. Last week, we used my red decoder to figure out the special mission. This week, I have got my special formula. Let's see what this mission, what this special mission says. Here is our paper. Here is my special formula. And we're gonna see what this says. Are you ready? Let's see what happens. Hmm. What does it say? Can you read that? Oh, it's kind of hard. The light's a little shiny on there. Let's tip it up. It says, make peace. We are to make peace. So our special mission is to make peace. The Bible doesn't say what Isaac's attitude about being forced to move over and over again was. It just says that he made peace. Jesus tells us to be people of peace. He tells us when somebody wrongs us to forgive them. And Peter even asked him, well, like, how many times should we forgive? Like seven? And Peter was thinking of like a big number. He thought, oh, seven is a lot. You should, maybe that's what we should do. And Jesus said, no, 70 times seven, which is almost 500. And Jesus purposely chose a huge number because we're supposed to make peace. We're supposed to be forgiving. We're supposed to live at peace. The Bible says as much as possible, live at peace with people. There are times to protect ourselves. Like when Queen Esther, when Mordecai was trying, to, not Mordecai, Haman. Mordecai was her, her, her um, uncle, cousin. When um, Haman was trying to kill all the Jews and Esther and Mordecai together, they set up a plan with the king to save the Jews, to protect themselves. They fought back. So there are times to fight back and protect yourself, but as much as possible, we're supposed to live at peace with each other. So what does that look like? That looks like forgiving. That looks like not choosing, choosing to forgive instead of choosing to be mad. It means letting other people, when they do something wrong, means forgiving them, okay? So think about what it looks like for you in your life this week. And as you're living your life, think, how can I make peace? with those around me. I'll see you next week for special mission number 